Well, hello there. Good evening, good morning, good afternoon, wherever it is, wherever you are on the world. Thank you for coming. This is Jojo, the HVAC man. And today I want to talk to you about drain traps. I want to keep it straight and forward and simple for you. Drain traps can be a major problem if they're not installed in the right place, uh, depending on the application. So not all drain traps are made the same. And being 30 years in the field and being a technical rep, going to troubleshooting jobs and fixing trouble when it comes to drains, outside of clogged drain lines, the number one issue was the drain trap, not the right kind and not in the right place. So let's get to talking about it here. So which one of these do we use? Okay, we've got this one right over here, which is a pre-built one or one you build in the field. This is an easy trap. This is what we call a run trap most of the time. This is a P trap, and this here is a J trap. So the question is, is which one do you use in what application? So before we answer that question, let me just run through the condensate drain system itself. It consists of a, some type of a drain pan. Some of the old ones had metal, most of them now are composite. Um, we've got our selection of drain traps to choose from. And then we've got our drain line as well that comes off of the drain trap. Now drain pans uh, can be a problem in and of themselves. Uh, they collect the condensate that comes off the evaporator coil. So as that warm uh, humid air comes into contact with the evaporator coil that's nice and cold, the air goes through it, the humidity condenses out of the air, collects onto the coil and falls into the drain pan. And that drain pan, we get all kinds of stuff in there because on the evaporated coil is dry skin flakes, hair, and all kinds of gunk. And it shows up and it gets inside the drain pan itself. And it can cause rust and it can cause a lot of goo inside a drain pan. So you want to keep those clean while you're doing your inspection. Always open up the unit, look at the drain pan, take your wet back, get all the junk out of there because if you don't, it's going to cause a problem. All that Nice, ooky, lovely, you know, stuff in there. All right. Now, here's what I want to talk about. The drain trap that's on the drain pan itself, okay? So what we have here is we've got two outlets on the evaporator coil. Okay, we've got a secondary drain line right here, and we've got a primary drain line. And the primary is where the trap goes. The secondary is there so that if the primary plugs up, the water will build up in the pan and then spill out of the secondary before it spills out of the coil and into your unit and on your ceiling and all that other fun stuff, okay? So the deal here is, though, you have to have two separate drain lines for each one. Don't tie them together because that defeats a purpose. Um, or you can uh, take the secondary drain and put a float switch inside of it. It looks like an elbow flipped upside down. It's got a float switch in it. And then you can tie that in series with your other safeties. Um, so that's a quick and dirty on the primary and secondary drain. So remember, the trap comes off of the primary. So which trap do we use? Well, we've got two kinds of drain setups. We've got a drain pan and evaporator coil that's on the positive side of the blower. That is, anytime the evaporator coil is on the outlet side of the blower in the supply side, that's a positive drain. Typically, that's a furnace with an evaporator coil on the end of it. And then we have the negative drain systems. Those are where the evaporator coil is on the inlet side of the blower. You typically see those at air handlers and package units where the blower is pulling the air through the coil and then out. And so it's also sucking air up through the drain. And if you don't have the right size drain trap, it'll hold that water. It might drain a little bit, but most of it will hold up inside a unit. And then when the unit shuts off, it all just gushes out, okay? Well, if the unit runs long enough, then the pan will overflow, spill into the air handler or spill into the package unit, get all the insulation wet, eventually drip out of there and damage a ceiling, or it'll get the insulation wet, break the glue off of it, and then it gets sucked up into the blower or up against the, uh, the evaporator coil. I know we've all seen that. And a lot of times it's not from a cracked drain pan, it's not from a plug drain line, is from too shallow of a trap. It's not the right one used on the right place. So which one do we use? Well, let's look at this first. This is the proper dimensions for a drain trap, okay? 
This is one you'll find a lot of installation instructions. You build it, it's always four inches down and then two inches back up. That's four inches down, two inches back up. That is the straight piece of pipe, not including the elbow. So when you build it, it's going to be more like six and three when you add the elbows into it. But when you cut that PVC, you want to make it four inches, one piece of straight, and then two inches the other straight, then add your elbows. Here's a uh, J-trap. J-trap's pre-built for you, and it is a, a easy trap, excuse me, and that is four inches down and two inches back up. A J-trap, which is this one over here, is also the proper dimensions, four inches down and two inches back up. Any of those will work. And those are good for negative drain systems, okay? So here we go. Any of these is what you want to use on a negative drain system. So if you got a package unit, it's low to the ground, it's on a pad, you should really dig it out, make a trench, and run that drain line out from the dirt so that it doesn't fill back up with mud and water. But if you got a package unit and it's got this trap on there, most likely it's not going to drain properly. Maybe draining some, but not enough. And a lot of that water is collecting in the unit. You'll see mold growing on the uh, the blower wheel and the blower housing. Uh, you might see condensation building up inside the unit, and that's due to the P-trap. The P-trap is just too shallow. They're out there for years and years on them, I know, but I promise you they're not running right, especially now with the X-13s and with the constant CFMs. They just suck them up. But all this is in the insulation instructions. I'm not making it up. All right, and then these two are supposed to be on a positive drain system. So the P-trap and the run trap are supposed to be on the positive side. So if you got a furnace coil um, and a furnace with an evaporator coil on the end of it, you can use one of those two traps. You are still supposed to trap it, not so that it'll drain properly. It'll drain just fine with a straight line, which a lot of people have, no traps at all. The trap is there so that if that actual drain went into an open drain, like in a basement, I don't want odors to come back up. So you have the trap there, it gets full of water, and it stops odors and bugs from getting back up inside the unit and the polluted air going into the duct system. Kind of same reason why we got traps under sinks, that is to prevent the odors from coming back up into the sink. Same idea. So that's why you're supposed to have a trap on the coil after the furnace. Okay? So here you go. Four inches down, two inches back up. You do that, it's going to run great. Any negative return system has to have any negative return uh, drain system has to have four four inches down, two inches back up trap for it to work properly. Last, don't forget, it says right there in the instructions you've got to have that trap within four inches of the unit, within four inches. So you can pipe it around a little bit from obstructions or whatever you need to do, but it's got to be four inches, and no more. You get past that four inches, the blower does not have the capability to hold that trap. And what it's going to do is it's going to back up. It's going to overflow. It's not going to drain right. So follow the instructions within four inches or closer. Okay, or closer. Now, drain lines. Don't forget, they get gunk all up inside of them. And that stuff will dry over the winter. And then you come back in the summer and you think, well, it's drained okay. But really, it's got a bunch of crud in there. And then it's going to get wet. It's going to start building up again. Now you're going to be returning for a drain line overflow when you just did a, pre, a preventive maintenance. And they're going to be very upset with you. So during preventive maintenance, before the summer starts, flush your drain lines out. Flush your traps out. Just make it a standard, just like cleaning stuff. Just flush them out. Make sure they're good and clear and clean. Okay? And make sure they got the right run on them. So you want it to be one quarter inch pitch per foot, one quarter inch pitch per foot, okay? So if we got a 30 foot run of, train, of drain line, right? Got 30 feet, then you wanna take 30 times 0.25 and that would give you a 7.5 inch drop. So wherever you start, let's say you your air handler is under the house, okay? And it's three feet from the floor down to the drain coming out of the air handler. Well, then where it ends on the other side, like say in this example down here on this end, you would want it to be seven and a half inches lower than where you started. And then you'll have the proper drain. 
Okay, well, that is Drain Traps Made Simple, about as quick as I could do it for you. I could say a lot more, give you a lot more examples, going through a lot more deeper data to prove to you what I'm telling you is right. But it's straight out of the installation instructions. I've been to job sites over and over with problem drains, and that is the reason. Too shallow of a trap uh, is uh, typically the biggest reason outside of a clogged drain line. Remember, if you like the video, uh, hit subscribe, hit like, please. If you want to get notifications, hit notifications. And if you have any suggestions on things else you'd like to see, let me know, and I'll be glad to teach it for you. Have a great day.